I've been getting burned recently. I've been watching Altered Carbon season one and now two, and there's nothing quite like the immense disappointment that settles in shortly after experiencing something you thought you would really like. Whether it be a new movie, music, or a video game, what have you, sometimes you just walk away from something feeling sad. And that's how I've been feeling recently. Some of the games that I've purchased recently, some of the shows that I've watched recently, have just been bad decisions. And they leave me just saying, I just wasted my time or I wasted my money on this. But the inverse of that is also true. There's nothing quite like the overly exuberant happiness that you feel after waiting for something you'll think you'll enjoy and to have that thing be even better than you could have imagined. Now, I had played Resident Evil 2 Remake only a month or two ago. It's been pretty recent. And that quickly became one of my favorite games of all time. I absolutely loved almost everything about that game. Now, Resident Evil 3 Remake was already announced, but I didn't know anything about the story. I just looked at the characters. Okay, that's Jill, I guess. And this new guy, Carlos, well, he doesn't look as cool as Leon, so, eh, okay. If the game is like 70, 80% as cool as Resident Evil 2 was for me, then I'll be happy. And that's how I went into this. And this game is just, just, just better. It's so good. Aside from the times that I was getting scared, I had a smile on my face from start to finish. I absolutely love this game. Now I do have some minor gripes, but overall, this is an amazing experience. And I'm so happy that I waited and I was excited for this game and I got it in my hands and it's damn good. Now this game sees you play as the heroine and one of the protagonists of Resident Evil 1, Jill Valentine. You also play as a guy, Carlos, I don't know his last name if they even say it in the game. And it's set in Raccoon City at least a couple hours before Resident Evil 2 takes place. If you remember Resident Evil 2, they're driving into the city. Jill lives in Raccoon City and she wakes up basically ground zero, basically as soon as the outbreak starts. Now the introduction to this game is actually genius. You start off in almost a black and white first person view. And this very quickly establishes that this is not just Resident Evil 2 updated. There's a different presentation, there's different themes. And this new camera angle and the color palette right at the start is in stark contrast to Resident Evil 2's opening. However, you'll quickly switch back to a third person over the shoulder perspective. And that's how you'll play out the remainder of the game. Essentially, this game takes place at least a couple hours, I'm not entirely sure, but at least a couple hours before Resident Evil 2 starts. If you remember Resident Evil 2, you're driving into Raccoon City. However, Jill is a resident of Raccoon City and she's basically at ground zero, hour zero for the outbreak to happen. You wake up to gunfire and people screaming and yelling outside your apartment window and that's where you'll play on the streets with people running by you, with dogs barking in the distance, with gunfire off in the distance, people still desperately fighting off zombies to survive. It's very cool and starkly different to the sort of corridors and buildings that you are in in Resident Evil 2. It's very claustrophobic. You're going through alleyways, you're on open streets, you're going through a donut shop and a toy shop. It feels markedly different than Resident Evil 2 and the locales and the environments that you'll go through. Now the story follows a similar vein to Resident Evil 2. You're kind of being hunted through an environment that leads you to different environments and set pieces and ultimately, you know, to the climactic final battle that you have. And while it's not a deep and nuanced character study on humanity and their motivations, it's still entirely serviceable and I had no issues with it. If you step back a little bit and just enjoy the ride and accept, okay, this character can live through this and this and this and this should have killed her and this probably would have killed her and this would have killed her, but she's still alive. Then you just kind of go along with the ride and it's so enjoyable. And I started to feel exactly what Jill felt in some of these cutscenes when the monster 
would show up again and again, and it would bring bigger and bigger weaponry or it would get more powerful. Me as the player, right before Jill would even say anything, I'd see the cutscene of this guy coming back again, and I'm like, are you kidding me? How is this thing not dead yet? Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm not as technical as Digital Foundry. The game looks basically like it did to my eyes in Resident Evil 2. I have to imagine there's some improvements since I think it had about a year, maybe longer, of development cycle before it was released. So you'd have to imagine there'd be some engine updates that they did internally. But this game looks gorgeous. It still runs beautifully. I'm so surprised at how well the game runs. It's an amazing engine. However, I did notice a few things I have to bring up. Now, to be completely fair, I have to imagine these are constraints placed upon the engine in order to get it to run at a good frame rate on consoles. But I do need to address a couple things. Earlier, I remarked on how beautiful and innovative it was to start the game off in first person mode. However, some of the textures that you'll look at immediately upon gaining control of the character are laughably terrible. If you look at the tack board that she's put newspaper clippings and photographs on there, it's so bad, it's so low res. Now, now it completely makes sense. You don't have unlimited RAM, memory bandwidth, and you can't afford to put all of these high res textures there, especially when you're really never gonna see them again. But it is very noticeable and upsetting that as soon as you gain control of the game and you're in awe of looking out of the window and how good the rain looks and how good the rain sounds and the soundscape outside your room, that as soon as you try to look in the room, things just completely fall apart. This thing also shows up in a different effect when zombies are further away from you. At a certain point, their frame rate goes from whatever the game is running at to like 10 or 20 frames in order to free up resources. And it's really noticeable. There's essentially like a line that you can cross where, okay, now they're animated at 84 or higher FPS. And then you step behind that line and all of a sudden they're like at 10 or 20. Uh, Resident Evil 2 had the same issue, but the only time it really popped up was like in a long hallway and a zombie was outside banging on the window and the moonlight was shining in through them and it still kind of looked okay because of the silhouetting that was going on. There was not really any other places in that game where you were far enough away from a from a zombie or an enemy for that type of effect to occur. But in here, it's much more noticeable and it happens a lot more often. Additionally, there was one other thing relating to angles. At a certain point, you go to like this oof, demonic hellscape from Satan where all these bugs are crawling around and the angles on it just look really, really, really bad. Now I run Resident Evil 2 on max settings. I ran this game on max settings. And again, I have to imagine there are some improvements, but the game looks just as good. Maybe I'm not knowledgeable enough about the rendering techniques or whatever they used, but it just it just looked great, and I can't really tell if it's much better than 2 uh, or, or not. Go to, like, Digital Foundry, and they'll probably have a full breakdown of all the changes. But to me, it just looks great, and I'm happy with that. But aside from that, the lighting, the shadows are exactly what they should be. Beautiful. They help paint each scene, each room that you go through in ominous tones. It's beautiful. And playing this game made me want to go buy an HDR monitor just to get even darker blacks. <laughs> I wanted to see this game as best it could look. It's so gorgeous. But enough of that childish stuff. Let's get to the meat and potatoes, the audio. I, I, I hope before I die I can mix audio as well as the people at Capcom who did this. Oh my god. It is orgasmic how good things sound in this game. The ominous undertones of discordant notes just constantly keeping you on edge. When you're walking through the city, again I mentioned you can hear people in the distance. You can hear gunfire randomly go off. At a certain point you can hear a dog barking in the distance. Not a dog that you fight as an enemy, just hey, there's a dog out in the city somewhere barking. You can hear things. The city sounds alive. As you're going through buildings, you can hear the creaks and moans of everything. As you're moving rusty objects, they grind on stuff. It feels believable because 
it sounds so good. Now, there was another issue I had with the audio, again, in the same diner, uh, Donuts Diners. I had an issue, even in the demo, which is persistent here, where there's like a phantom radio with no actual source for where that's coming from. Um, but I noticed another issue in there, and it probably cropped up in a lot of other places, but this was when it was most starkly evident. There's, again, that radio is playing noise, and you can hear it throughout the diner. However, when you move through a corridor to head to the safe room, there's basically like a line that you can cross where it just cuts off. It doesn't slowly fade as you get further down the corridor. As soon as you walk one or two steps, boom, the, it's, it's gone. You just don't hear it. It goes from zero to 100. And that was like, oh, okay, I wish you would have maybe faded it or mixed it better, or put like a trigger further in the hallway and like change it a little bit, but whatever. And, and the best, oh, it's the worst part, but it's the best part. But it's, it's, it's the worst part. That horrific, demonic hellscape you go through uh, it started off as like you have to assume this normal generator with a chain link fence around it But as soon as you get there, you need to turn the power back on as soon as you get there You see this bulbous oozing pus filled slimy grotesque Organism just surrounding this entire complex and you have to go in there and you step in off the concrete onto the slimy floor and immediately your footsteps portray that type squishing noise. Oh, that reminds me, in the street, you can walk over different types of objects and it's a small thing. Of course it would be like that. But if you walk over glass, you can hear the crunching of the glass. It's, it's so good. Okay, back to the tunnel. You're walking on this slimy, oozing, pussing tunnel and the walls are like a little bit tighter because they're filled up with whatever this weird growth is. And you can hear the the skittering of little bugs and insects as they're crawling through the walls and they pop out of these orifices and they can they can walk on the ground or on the walls or on the ceiling and the the field of view is just small enough that you can't see everything when you're looking straight you have to look up but then you can't see what's below you and if you look on the left wall you can't really see what's on the right wall and if you look down you can't really see what's above you and as soon as you get one of those bugs in your line of sight, in your flashlight, it'll sk it'll skitter away behind a corner and you can't really get a clear shot at it all the time. And you, you have to turn on four different generators in this little complex in order to activate the power again. And you're walking through this and you can hear them through the walls on the left and you're looking on the left and you're like, I fucking know you're in there, bitch. But they're, they're not coming out of the little orifices to attack you. They're just waiting. <laughs> They're just biding their time and it's creepy and you're walking through there and each shot reverberates off the walls and you're progressing further and further and at certain points you'll pull a generator and then a bunch of them will spawn out but they won't attack you they'll just follow you and then at another point you'll pull a generator and a whole wave of them will come and then another point you'll pull a generator and nothing and nothing will happen and that'll be the most tense moment when nothing happens you won't hear anything for a bit and as soon as you keep walking a little more then they'll come back the fucking bitches <laughs> they'll come back and it just puts you in this uncomfortable tense feeling the whole way through and as soon as you get out of there and you turn all the generators on and that thing lights on fire you're like fuck yes now, speaking of the field of view, when I was talking about the tunnel, let's, let's talk about the gameplay. There have been some market improvements to the formula, which drastically improve the quality of life of playing this game. And they're all minor. It keeps that same feeling of the second one, that same feeling of the, the RE engine that they've established. But the changes, the changes just make so much sense. Okay, the first one, when you pick up an item, the same thing as Resident Evil 2. It'll zoom in, full screen, and it'll give you some text of what that item is. Ooh, a green herb will heal you slightly. And then you'll cut to your inventory, and then it'll slot in one of the slots in the inventory, and you can look at your inventory, and then you go back to playing the game. However, in this one, whenever you pick up another green herb, that same thing doesn't happen. 
it just automatically gets picked up and slotted in the inventory. There's no break in the gameplay. You keep going, you keep walking. And this shows up immediately as a noticeable improvement, but it plays into the gameplay even more. You never go into the menu. You never lose the music. You never lose the tension of the environment, even as you're picking stuff up. Perfect scenario for this is during boss fights. No longer do you run around the boss fight, pick up items, and you sort of cut out of that boss fight and the music and the tension of that to go to the inventory and then back out. And then, oh, you picked up some more handgun, go back to the inventory and then back out. No, in this one, it's like a frantic, you're running and you're, you're running on the outskirts and you see that little downward chevron, that, that downward arrow, and you're running towards it and you're mashing the F key to pick it up before that fucker comes and smashes you and you die. And, and you just pick him up desperately and, you, and then you dodge to the left or to the right. This game has a new mechanic where you can hit the space bar or whatever button and WASD and you'll sort of dodge off to the left, off to the right, forward or backward. And I'm not entirely sure what happens when you do it perfectly, but there's like a perfect dodge mechanic in this game. And I think it makes you a little bit faster or it makes the enemy that tried to attack you recover a little bit slower or maybe both. I'm not really sure, but it's there's there's a noticeable moment when you perfectly dodge something where there's like a white flash on the screen. You, you hear a sound effect and the dodge animation even changes to like signify, no, you did this correctly. Now, it's not a parry. It's not like dodge at the very last second and perfectly parry the enemy's attacks. There's animations to it and you can get hit in the startup of that animation. You need to be dodging before that attack actually lands. So it looks like you're actually dodging it. It's not like a Dark Souls roll where you have, you know, five frames of invulnerability right at the start or something like that. And that dodge roll also plays into the other character. So you play as Jill and then Carlos. Now, Jill, as the as the, the more lithe female, she has that dodge roll that you do. Carlos is a bigger dude. He's like army trained. He's got an assault rifle. He doesn't dodge. He like shoulder checks when you do that. And if you perfectly time his dodge, whatever, uh, he'll like Chris Redfield punch the monster and they'll go flying backwards, buying you a bunch of space. Whereas if you just do it normally, he'll shoulder check him, but you'll be like right next to him. So you got to run the hell away so you don't get bitten immediately. And the two characters play out differently, which is great. In Resident Evil 2, I didn't even recognize this until playing Resident Evil 3. In Resident Evil 2, you had two characters, but essentially they played very similar. In this one, there was a marked difference between playing Jill and playing as Carlos. Jill has her handgun and her grenade launcher and her shotgun, and you always feel like you're slightly behind the eight ball, and you're taking each corner slowly, and you're peeking around, and you're trying to manage your resources. But when it would cut to, to, to Carlos, it's definitely more action-oriented, more combat-focused. You have an assault rifle, and you can just just mow down people. And at a certain point, I had over 400 assault rifle ammunition stockpiled up. Like, you can just dump on people with this guy. And the different scenarios the game leads you through also play into that character's strength. Carlos, again, is more combat focused, more action focused. Jill is more like sort of horror and slower pace focused. And, and it's not to such a great extent like Resident Evil 6 where it's like, okay, Leon is completely horror and Chris is like running around punching B.O.W.s and that's like the game, there you go. No, they, they perfectly blend those elements together but they'll slightly stretch it in those two different directions to give each of those characters a little more personality to them, a little more gameplay difference to them. Additionally, the way they interact with each other is much more believable than in Resident Evil 2. In Resident Evil 2, I enjoyed conceptually the idea of Oh, you can play as Leon and then you can play as Claire and you'll have like Leon A and then Claire B and uh, essentially it'll be like Claire 20 minutes after Leon. She's going through the RPD following in Leon's footsteps. However, in reality, you did the same exact puzzles. You fought the same bosses. I mean, the puzzles had like some slight, okay, here, here's the new solution. It's slightly different, but like it didn't really feel like you were following behind that other character's footsteps. You did the same exact stuff they should have already done. 
However, in this game, it's not presented the same way where like you don't you don't do Jill A and Carlos B, for instance. It's just one story from start to finish. But that allows the characters to connect and talk and be on walkie talkies and, and essentially like be, they're, they're together in a boss fight in a certain way uh, later in the game. And they feel much more believable and realistic and it feels like these two people are going through this story together. They meet up and they separate and they meet back up again and they separate. And it feels so much better than Resident Evil 2. It feels so much more believable than Resident Evil 2. They also changed a couple things, namely like the defensive items are gone uh, in the sense that when you got bit, you could use a defensive item and get out of danger. Now there are no defensive items. You have a knife, you still have hand grenades and flash grenades, but you can no longer use them to prevent yourself from taking damage. Your knife doesn't have any durability and you can keep it on you at all times. And that's the only knife that you'll pick up. Your hand grenades and flash grenades can now only be used offensively, like how they could in Resident Evil 2. Now, this actually completely changed my mind on how to use them for the better. In Resident Evil 2's case, as soon as I picked up a hand grenade or a flash grenade, and I recognized, okay, they can be used defensively, but I should probably like wait to save them, to maximize them. I'll keep them in my inventory, but I'll never really use them defensively. I'll just wait until I get a cluster of three or more zombies and then I'll use them. Again, it led me into that same place that basically everyone who plays video games knows, which is at the end of the game, you just have like 50 hand grenades that you've never used because, well, it's not, yeah, it's not right. I don't need to use it right now. No, I'm not going to use it right now. Mm. This game, you got less but you needed to use them. I felt situations where I needed to use the hand grenade, like the game was wanting me to use it here. There's a certain enemy type that I fought them one-on-one uh, -on -one when they were introduced. They scared the shit out of me. And I fought them one-on-one -on -one and then quickly realized, oh my God, I'm going through like 40 plus rounds of ammunition. Uh, hello, God? Okay, still alive. It's Jumanji out there. I'm going through 40 rounds of ammunition trying to take this fucker down. I'm just going to use a, a hand grenade. And his, he died in one hand grenade. And I was like, oh, I'm going to fucking kill all of you bitches. So as soon as I would see him later, they'd be charging at me. And I'd like just underhand a hand grenade. And then it would blow up and I would feel good. Ah, it's so, it's just good, man. It's just, it's just, it's just good. It's just good. There's no blue herbs in this game you just have the green and the red herbs i mean maybe there's a blue herb i just didn't find it but i think there's just red and green in here but you still have the different types of gunpowder that you can mix and match to make your different ammunition types and that'll play into more handgun ammo more shotgun ammo more magnum ammo and then you have a completely separate type of ammunition like explosive ammo and you can combine those in different ways to get different ammo for your grenade launcher and yes the handgun, shotgun, grenade launcher, and magnum were all in Resident Evil 2, and they play basically how they did there. There's different attachments, with, there's different attachments which slightly change some stuff, but the big difference is in this game, you have a different type of ammunition for the grenade launcher, and it's vitally important to use that new ammunition type in boss fights, and you'll use it repeatedly in boss fights, and it makes sense for what it's doing and how it interacts with the with the with the boss and what it does and it's like super fun to use i loved it now look i don't think anyone's gonna be able to argue this point i think the boss fights are just bad i think the boss fights are are just bad they're way too bullet spongy and they're so scripted they do the same pattern over and over and it's not even like um Legend of Zelda, like rule of three, where, okay, you do this thing three times and knock him out of it three times and you win. No, they still have like an HP bar that you have to deplete. And it can end up to them just doing the same pattern of moves over and over and over as you like, okay, all right, this boss fight's going to take five minutes and I'm not really in danger of dying because you're doing the same move over and over and I already know how to dodge it. It just takes me that long to like wait for you to get your animation done get in position, shoot my thing, run up to you when you're weak, unload on the shotgun, okay, now I gotta get more ammo or craft more ammo, like, 
I don't think the boss fights are that good. They're overly scripted. I didn't think the boss fights in Resident Evil 2 were that good either. Um, so that's definitely a bad thing. But thankfully, they've introduced some environmental stuff, which is really useful. They have like a generator and it'll stun any zombies nearby. There's of course the red tanks that you can shoot and they'll blow up and the zombies will go flying and they'll be burned to a crisp and that feels really good. And it saves your ammo. And, and this last stuff, I guess, is probably just going to be anecdotal and, and maybe just purely for me. But I played the demo for Resident Evil 3 and I had played Resident Evil 2. And I felt, as the player, I felt like better equipped to fight the zombies. Just like how Jill would feel because she fought them and fought a lot of these enemies in the first Resident Evil. And I felt like, okay, I kind of know this engine. I kind of know how the zombies move. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not going in blind. I kind of have like a foundation for these mechanics with which to build upon. So I was already playing differently than I played Resident Evil 2. It felt like it wasn't the first time I was fighting these zombies. It's, it's a weird feeling and that's probably not gonna apply to a lot of people, but for me, it was like, putting on those old combat boots that Jill's wearing, like, okay, let's go, like, I know how to do this, let's do this, and it felt appropriate for that character. Furthermore, again, I played the demo for Resident Evil 3, and they changed some stuff up, and they got me. I was expecting certain things to play out exactly how it did in the demo, and they didn't, and I got scared a couple times, and things that I was waiting to happen, and like aiming my shotgun in a certain area, waiting for this fucker to come out, and he never did. Dude, and then, and then, oh my God, at a certain point, you're like on a, like a fire truck ladder or scaffold or something. And I'm, and I'm above the city just a little bit. And I look to the right and I see, that's the, that's the, that's the police department from the second one. That's the police department. That's it. And you can go in and you can see like, oh, that's the, the, the it's like the, the, the garage. And you're like, oh, that's the garage. That's the thing. That's, that's where the car was. And that's where that was. Oh my God. And then that door led into the little prison thing. Oh fuck. And then as Carlos, again, this game is set hours, at least a couple hours before Resident Evil 2, you play through, you play through the RPD. And you go in there, and they're even referencing shit from the first one. The guy's like, what the fuck is up with these weird-ass doors? And it makes sense, because he would have no idea why are these doors so weird. And you're going through the same hallways, and oh my god, it felt so good. And I had a perpetual, like, Joker-ass grin on my face from how just good that felt. And I'm going through there, and you're seeing events that Leon saw... He, Leon would walk through the hallway and you'd see like a dead cop. But when you're playing as Carlos, you see like how that guy died and how he ended up there and all oh, fuck. And you know, it doesn't really make sense timeline wise, like if we're being honest here, but it still felt good. The, the same safes, I opened the safe because I remembered what the code was from Resident Evil 2 and I put it in and it worked and it opened and it had the same shit that it did if Leon had opened it and you go into the weapons locker and as Leon you'd go in there and a bunch of the doors would be open and empty and this, you go in and you take the stuff and it's like, dude, it just, oh, it just was so good. Now, this took me like six, seven hours to beat. I died five times. I played on the standard difficulty. I died five times and I got a C ranking on it. Now, that's, that's it. That's the story. There's no, you know, Jill 1 and then Carlos 2 or Jill 1 and then Jill 2 experience the full story. To the best of my knowledge, I think that's it. You just play through the story and that's the story. But this time... Uh, you, you still have some of the same unlockables. You have like the concept art and then the models that you can look when you do in-game challenges. However, when you beat the game, you unlock these different um, like points, I guess, for different things that you did in the game. And you can go back in the game and do different challenges to get even more points. And there's like an in-game shop in the main menu. It's not like actually in the, the game where you can spend those points on different things. There's there's a different costume in there, there's different weapons in there, there's these uh, like coins that you can hold uh, that regenerate your health or give you more defense or give you more attack. Um, and maybe they disable like getting a high score or getting an S plus rank on some stuff, I'm not sure. But 
um, hey, the infinite gun is like, no, you got to get an S plus before you can get that infinite gun. So a lot of the same challenges and stuff from Resident Evil 2 have made their way over here. However, they're a little more modular because you can pick and choose what item you want. There's like different skins. There was a, a knife in there that you can use that has a different skin. And if you charge it up, I think it lights people on fire. Like, okay, that seems pretty cool. And this game also comes with uh, Resident Evil Resistance, which I haven't played. I just did the story. That was what I was intrigued by the most. If Resident Evil Resistance is good, then you know maybe I'll put a video out talking about that. But you get basically both of those games. You get the story for Resident Evil 3, uh, which again took me six, seven hours. And you have like additional challenge modes and new game plus stuff that you can go back and do. And then Resident Evil Resistance, which is a, a not asynchronous, uh, asymmetric type game where one person plays as like, I'm not sure, but like an umbrella person who's like dropping zombies, trying to stop you from doing your objective. And then uh, four like normal people and they're trying to, you know, we're trying to survive. And then the overlord is like trying to drop monsters and kill them. Seems like it could be cool. I, I, I haven't loaded it up. I was mainly focused on, hey man, I hope this game plays as well as, Resident Evil 2 and the story is cool and the characters are cool. So I just did the uh, the main story. Now I've done like a handful of video reviews for games, like really long in-depth videos, reviews for games. And I've kept like a pretty consistent neutral tone as I'm describing events or scenarios and stuff. But I, I just can't stop myself from being overly happy when I'm talking about this game and getting excited about the different moments that I had whilst playing it. And I hope that comes across in the commentary for this. Again, to tie it back to the very start, I've been burned by games. Man, I, I think I'm really gonna like this strategy game. Let me get Phoenix Point with all the DLC and the season pass or whatever the fuck. And then I'm playing it and I'm like, this is just not well polished and it doesn't feel good. And I'm just watching Alter Carbon season one and two and they start off so good and they get me excited and it's cyberpunk which I love and then it just kind of lets me down at the end and you just walk away like sad just like disappointed and and this is just not that at all I I was hoping if Resident Evil 2 was a 10 I was hoping this game would be a 7 or 8 and I'd be happy and this is like an 11 it's it's better, it refines things more. I'm more interested in this game than I was in Resident Evil 2 because of the innovations and the little changes they made to make it play better. I didn't realize it until after I had beaten the game and I was going through the editing, but there's no like dial puzzles like there were in Resident Evil 2 and I don't miss them. I didn't really think about, yeah, there's safes and stuff that you open and use key items to progress through stuff, but you don't have to open up your notepad and like, look, okay, well, this is the lion and the lion has the herb and then the water pot and then you gotta like combine it and do the, okay, crap, I got that wrong. Let me open up the notepad again. There's nothing like that in this one and that keeps the pace and the tension moving forward. You, sometimes, okay, here's the key, uh, here's the door, let me open up my inventory, let me use this item, boom, it's open, let's keep going. There's not any puzzle at all where you need to reference the notepad and like piece things together. And maybe that comes across as a negative, but I gotta be honest, the pace of the game, I never noticed it at all until like basically now when I'm reflecting on it. Oh yeah, there really wasn't any puzzles where you like move chess pieces and stuff. Um, but in subsequent playthroughs, I found those to just be kind of tedious anyway and again it's kind of funny how they remark on it in this one when carlos goes to the rpd and he sees like a door with the spade on icon he's like man this is a weird ass door and it makes sense for the story in the game that it is and i'll be honest maybe you will take that as a negative like oh there's not as many cool puzzles as in the second one but again like it it's not noticed at all it's not a negative at all i i i actually kind of liked it every puzzle was relatively simple to figure out and that keeps the pace and the tension of that scene moving forward it keeps the momentum high you never pause and go to the notepad and then unpause and go back to the notepad and unpause it's it's just it's just streamlined and so well done guys Guys, this this game, this game is on another level. This game is on another level. 
I think this game's story is more cohesive and tighter and better executed than Resident Evil 2. I think the gameplay, innovations, and changes they made make it a better experience than Resident Evil 2. I actually found the characters a little more interesting than Resident Evil 2, even though Leon still looks the coolest out of all of them. And audibly, that tunnel, that, that fucking tunnel just completely sold me. Whatever you do, I'm down. That tunnel was, that tunnel was something else. Man, I can't speak highly enough about this game. You really, you really, really should go out and play this game. The horror was there. Jump scares were there. Aside from the jump scares, I was getting scared normally. The tension is there. The gameplay is there to support that tension. It just fires on all cylinders. This... This is this is just like a masterpiece, man. This is so good. You and me. I'm not sticking around. Just look around you. The longer we wait, the more screwed we are. 